Hi folks, well it's quite a nice night tonight. Um, quite clear but there is a little bit of a high mist in places. Uh, and also there's a half moon, just over half moon. Uh, but nevertheless, um, as uh, indicated in the last video, uh, I think tonight we'll uh, give Mars another go. Uh, this time using the Skymax 180 um, Mac Cass. Um, a little bit further past opposition now, so obviously it's not going to be a completely <laughs> light for light comparison, but I think it'll be interesting enough. Um, and get some uh, decent images, it'd be good to do a comparison between uh, this and the Celestron uh, 9.25 SET. I'm Dr Ray and welcome to AstroGadge. So, uh, as you can see tonight, we've got the Skywatcher Skymax 180 uh, Mac Cass uh, set up. Uh, as with the Celestron, I have the ASI 385 uh, one shot colour camera mounted on a Teleview 2x uh, permit. I've also got the um, Gemini autofocuser. Um, which has proved to be excellent with something this um, of this focal length <laughs> with a two times parameter on it any little touch sends the thing absolutely crazy so it's really nice not not, not causing any undue vibrations on, on, on the scope the seeing earlier was absolutely pretty abysmal but dare I say it um, it's really quite high in the sky at the moment, um, so this is a couple of hours later from when I first came out to set everything up. It, it's risen in altitude quite considerably, so uh, dare I say it, it looks like that the seeing's improved a little bit, so it um, be interesting to, to, to see exactly what we get. Alright, so here's the live capture coming in. It's a bit wobbly because of the seeing. Uh, but, you know, we can still get a bit of detail out here. We've got the um, polar caps, Acidalia planitia, Valles marinaris. So there's plenty of detail for us to eke out here in post-processing PEP and Autostacker, etc. Hi, folks. Well, after I captured the data, I did the usual post-processing uh, for planetary imaging. I did PEP, Autostacker. Registacks. Now here's something I've been trying recently and I've got a quite a well a fair amount of success with. I've been putting these images through Blur Exterminator um, in PixInsight, which of course it's not really designed for, but I nevertheless I've been getting some pretty reasonable results out of it. So I would urge you maybe to try that if you if you've got PixInsight and Blur Exterminator, try try um, try cleaning up your planetary images using that. See how you get on. Uh, that, that's kind of by the by. Um, before I show the pictures, I think it's important to realise this isn't a, a really a, a proper comparison. They're two very different scopes. It's like uh, comparing apples with oranges. Uh, Celestron, for example, it, it's got a um, aperture is 235 millimetres. The Skymax is only 180 millimetres. The focal length of the Celestron is about 2,350 millimetres, where on, as on the Skymax, it's 2,700 millimetres. It's F11 on the Celestron, and it's a whopping F15 on the Skymax. So we'll have to bear these things in mind uh, when, we, when we look or compare the two images. But all the same, I think it's interesting to see what the quality images you get from. Um, 
from um, Mars uh, using using these two telescopes. Uh, the the seeing I have to say uh, on this particular instance wasn't as good as the first one, but hey ho. Um, anyway, without further ado, let's go and look at the images. Well, from what I can tell, the both each image is pretty good. Um, uh, I'm just if, if I'm just putting the specs up for each of the telescopes. Um, one's uh, almost two thousand pounds sterling. The other one's about a thousand pounds. So Celestron's twice the cost of the SkyMax. Is the image any better, um, given my, the conditions where I'm taking them from? I don't know. Um, the SkyMats gives a very acceptable image. Um, again, the thing to consider when you look at the specs is that the SkyMax is a much slower scope. And it's really, as, as I said in the previous video but about this particular scope, is it's really designed for uh, lunar and solar system work. Uh, it's it can do things like star clusters and double stars and things like that, but it's, it's primarily, primarily designed uh, as a solar system uh, imaging device. Celestron, uh, much bigger uh, aperture, um, much slower scope. Um, and, I, and my own experience with SCTs like the Celestron is they're kind of a jack of all trades, really. So if you're looking for a scope, uh, not purely for planetary lunar work, then that would be the one to go for. It's the price, a double the price. Um, but it's, it's probably more the, the more versatile instrument out of the two. That's not to say the SkyMax is rubbish in any way. It's very good what it does, particularly at this point, price point. As I've said before in previous videos about the scope, it's, it's excellent quality for, for the price point you get. Uh, a really, really nice instrument, and I think as, you, as you've seen uh, over the uh, over this video, it produces you know very, very uh, acceptable results. Um, so I've not really altered my uh, initial opinion uh, from from the the first um, videos I've done, I've done about the SkyMax. It's a very good instrument. It depends what ultimately what you want to use it for. What 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 your um, what your thing in astronomy is, is it the planets, is it deep sky objects? And of course, it's also the, the, the issue of price. It's, you know, uh, we, we, unfortunately, we don't all have infinite budgets. So again, it's, it's a combination of things, price, what you're using it for, and so on and so forth. As I said earlier, the Celestron is certainly, uh, because it's a much faster scope, uh, is a very much more uh, a jack of all trades. The SkyMax, on the other hand, is really intended for solar system work. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, the video. I hope you found it interesting. And um, please, if you like it, give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out. And uh, again, um, again, if you like what you've seen, please consider subscribing. It doesn't cost anything. It simply means you get a heads up uh, when I produce more content. So thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And remember, keep watching the sky. Watch the skies everywhere. Keep looking. Keep watching the sky.